So guys, in this next news story, two teenagers have been handed life sentences for the murder of an 18-year-old man in Ipswich at the beginning of last year. Alfie Hammett and Joshua Howell, who are both aged 19, appeared at Ipswich Crown Court, where they were sentenced to life imprisonment with minimal custodial terms of 24 years and 20 years, respectively. Hammett of St Andrew and Howell of Ipswich had both been found guilty on Friday the 26th of January for murdering Raymond James Quigley, also known as James, following a trial lasting over five weeks. They were also both found guilty of possessing an offensive weapon in a public place and Howell was further convicted of threatening another person with a bladed article he was found with a toothbrush with a razor blaze in prison. So the incident occurred at approximately half three in the afternoon on Tuesday the 17th of January 2023 in Ipswich. James had travelled to Ipswich from his home time in Windenham in Norfolk to meet with two friends as he was walking through the town centre with them when they encountered Hammett and Howell who were wearing face masks had hoods up and were both carrying large knives. Habit then ran directly towards James and proceeded to attack him while Howell, brandishing a machete, chased one of James' friends who managed to escape to safety in a nearby shop. Howell then ran off Providence Street towards Tower Ramparts while Hammett, having stabbed James a number of times, ran off in the opposite direction back across Cornhill. Following the attack, James managed to stagger across the road to get help and collapsed in a nearby shop. Members of the public came to his assistance and police, basically, they initially provided him with first aid. Um, ambulance crews arrived shortly afterwards, but despite the best efforts of the public and medical personnel, he sadly passed away at the scene. So let's rest in peace, Raymond James Quigley, and my condolences go out to your family. A home office post-mortem examination concluded that James sustained four stab wounds to the torso with two wounds to the chest and abdomen, proving to be fatal. A large-scale murder inquiry to Identify and locate the suspects was immediately launched following the incident. As it occurred in the town centre, there was a huge amount of CCTV opportunities and the attack itself was captured on camera. Officers then began viewing footage and tracking the movements of the offenders after the incident. Hammett's movements were tracked back through the town centre until he eventually left the main shopping centre in Car Street heading towards Tackett Street car park. He'd been wearing a distinctive grey jogging bottoms which he changed out of into black joggers somewhere within that car park and then he later changed back into the grey joggers by the time he returned home. He was then captured on camera where crucially he was seen for the first time without his face mask. Further inquiries over the next couple of days continued to track his movements along Rope Walk past the new college before re-emerging back Hamlet where he was then seen without a mask with his hood down. Hamlet was positively identified by officers after his image was circulated. Meanwhile Howell's movements were also tracked following up Providence Street into Tower Ramparts past the bus station along Foudry Lane. Howell was identified as a suspect around 48 hours after the murder by a combination of his description and mobile phone analysis that confirmed his presence at the locality at the time of the attack. Officers began to make inquiries as to his whereabouts and it transpired that he had fled to an address in Oxfordshire. Just after midnight on Saturday the 21st of January, officers arrested Howell in Oxfordshire and a little over two hours later Hammett was arrested in Russia, St Andrew. They were taken to police custody for questioning before being charged with murder two days later. CCTV inquiries also tracked the movements of both suspects prior to the attack, working backwards from where the incident occurred. Hammett was captured on a doorbell camera leaving home that afternoon at around quarter past two, wearing the distinctive grey joggers the same as those worn by James Quigley's killer. He then travelled to Ipswich on his moped and his vehicle was fitted with a tracker that confirmed these movements. From Bishop's Hill, he made his way across to Alexandra Park, where he then waited for Howell. Howell was captured leaving his house at around half two in the afternoon and he was then seen just over 30 minutes later walking along Argyle Street towards the college and was now wearing the distinctive coat which matched that of the second suspect. The pair met in the grounds of the college at around quarter past three immediately walking towards each other and exchanged a greeting of a fist pump that suggested they were known to each other. They began walking towards the town centre taking a snaking route on their way towards Westgate Street and could be seen standing and looking around various places like they were clearly searching for someone. 20 minutes later, after they met near the college, they had found James and attacked him. Hammett and James were known to each other and so Hammett would have had no trouble identifying him in a crowded street. The court heard the motive of the attack was most likely due to tensions between rival gangs from Norwich. James Quigley has an association with a gang called OTM which stands for Only the Money. Hammett, who had previously lived in Norwich, 
was associated with another gang there called Third Side, who were rivals of OTM. Joshua had links to the Nacton Gang in Ipswich, also known as IP3, who the prosecution attests had formed a level of cooperation with Third Side. Mobile phone analysis discovered that a series of phone calls had been made prior to the attack between two individuals, one associated with Third Side and the other with IP3. Immediately following these calls, a call was made by the Third Side associates at Hammett and the IP3 associates at Howell. Within minutes of receiving these calls, both Hammett and Howell left their respective homes and made their way towards the college. The prosecution attests that this sequence of events was no mere coincidence, although what was said in these calls cannot be proven. It is highly likely that some sort of order or direction was given to both Hammett and Howell. Alfie Hammett did not give evidence during the trial, but his defence disputed that he was the man who attacked James Quigley, referred to as male one by the prosecution. Joshua Howell did take the stand to give evidence and denied being affiliated with IP3. He claimed he had not previously met male one and said he had gone out to make a drug deal that day and was carrying a machete for his own protection. He said after making the deal, he had only walked through the town with male one to show him the way to a kebab shop and the attack had occurred spontaneously without his prior knowledge. His defence for drawing up his machete was that he feared being attacked by the group. The court heard that Howell had left Ipswich on the night of the attack and travelled to Oxfordshire. The following day he bought over £250 worth of clothes and a suitcase and had booked a flight out to the UK was due to depart the day after he was arrested. Detective Chief Inspector Tam Burgess, a senior investigating officer, said this was a horrific and completely senseless act of extreme violence and as a result in the death of an 18-year-old man who had his whole life ahead of him. I want to pay tribute to James' family for their dignity and perseverance throughout this investigation and more laterally the trial, which has been an incredibly difficult process for them. He said, He said, I also want to thank everyone who's been involved with this inquiry, from detectives to the CCTV team, inquiry officers, major incident room staff and crime scene investigators. It was an intense three days following the attack, seizing and viewing hundreds of hours of video footage and gathering all of the evidence which ultimately led to us identifying Alfie Hammett and Joshua Howell. Still staggered by the brazen way which Hammett and Howell committed this heinous crime in such a public place with numerous members of the public around and in full view of CCTV cameras. James Quigley was simply walking through town with his friends when he was subjected to this unprovoked attack and stood no chance at all. And the motivation, although they are never likely to tell us themselves, everything points it to be gang rivalry. Across the country we are seeing too many deaths of his nature. This senseless loss of young lives has to stop. Carrying knives is not the answer to anything. It devastates people's lives, not just those of the victims, but the families and friends, and also the families and friends of the attackers. We must continue to work together as a society to educate everybody about the risks and do everything we can to prevent another family going through what James's family have had to suffer. So guys, this is a new story coming from the streets of the UK. Once again, if you already haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and please give this video a little like as it will help with algorithms. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.